more than a quarter century, Mao Zedong was China's absolute ruler. When he died, few could imagine China without him. My neighbor said, what is China going to do? We've lost direction. Heaven is collapsing. With Mao's death, a new era began. With new leaders, new visions, and a dramatic new course for the Chinese people. Never in the history of the world has a nation been transformed with such speed and magnitude. This was communism's new revolution. In 1976, when Mao died, China was a poor country, largely isolated from the rest of the world. A quarter century of communism had failed to bring prosperity to the Chinese people. Mao's vision of the path to communism had been one of continual revolution he had interrupted periods of growth and calm with one turbulent political campaign after another. In the last decade of his rule, he had launched the Cultural Revolution and brought China to disaster. Mao's most fanatic supporters, millions of teenage Red Guards, followed his orders to attack their teachers, intellectuals, Communist Party officials, even their own families. Few escaped the violence. To educate the masses, people who were going to be executed were put on public display and tortured. It felt like a ritual sacrifice. You were the goat put on the altar. I was the main target, and my father and brother were brought to watch. I could hear people shouting, shoot him. The pain from seeing my father below was deeper than any physical pain I suffered. During this period, Mao's wife, Jiang Qing, and three of her colleagues, later called the Gang of Four, gained great power. They pushed the Cultural Revolution to its most brutal extremes. When Mao saw that China was on the brink of civil war, he turned on the Red Guards. He ordered them to leave their homes in the cities and move to the countryside to be educated by the peasants. These young people became known as sent down youth. Many people were shocked after they got to northern Anhui and saw what it was like. There was nothing there except a few grass huts. The people ate sorghum that was hard as iron. It was awful. We really didn't want to be assigned there for the rest of our lives. 
Once a brigade official said to me, both you and your sister are staying here. Stop dreaming about leaving the countryside. I couldn't sleep the whole night after hearing him. I cried and cried as if I had gone mad. Millions of young people lost years of education and family life laboring in the countryside. By the time of Mao's death, many were relieved. His policies had brought so much suffering and catastrophe to China. So I thought that Mao's time was finally over. And it was high time. The unknown Hua Guafeng was Mao's official successor, but his position was far from secure. Mao's widow, Zhang Qing, together with her allies, posed the most immediate threat to his power. Less than a month after Mao's death, in a move that thrilled the country, Hua Guafeng arrested the Gang of Four. People hated them very much. It was only because they had Mao's favor and protection that they reached such high positions. After Mao's death, they lost power. There is a saying in Chinese, when the big tree falls down, all the monkeys run away. People went to buy crabs. They bought one female crab, which symbolized Jiang Qing and three male ones, which symbolize the rest of the Gang of Four. Everyone was joking around like that. Every family went to the store and bought four crabs, which they tied up and held on a string. They would wave the crabs at friends to say hello. And then they took the crabs home and cooked them. <laughs> we Chinese called this our second liberation. Everyone was really happy about it. With his immediate rivals disposed of, Hua Guafeng worked to strengthen his position. I saw Hua Guafeng several times at meetings. The impression he gave me was that he was doing his best to imitate Mao Zedong. Like the way he walked and the way he talked. Hua had an historic opportunity, but unfortunately he didn't seize it. Soon after he arrested the Gang of Four in October, I was informed of his instructions that every word by Mao must be followed. It was the same old way of talking. I saw an editorial in the Beijing Daily, which had a line that really amazed me. We must obey Chairman Hua the way we did Chairman Mao. And we must love Chairman Hua the way we love Chairman Mao. I was so shocked that I started shouting, how can they write stuff like this? A colleague poked me with his pen and said, stop. Chairman Hua himself approved this editorial. I never had much hope for him after that.